So we're here with Rob Goffey, and we're going to ask basically this one question of um, why should anyone be led by you? Um, Rob, when I was reading this book, I think there's one word that really sticks out to me. Um, as, a, as a Gen Y, uh, when someone is able to be vulnerable in front of me, um, to me, that, that actually is a strength. Yeah. Um, do you find regularly that leaders that are trying to, to lead a younger generation, um, are they scared of being vulnerable with us? Because often I don't feel that, that it's like I feel that someone's putting up a front yeah. and pretending. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of middle managers are often threatened by, by Gen Y. Um, mm -hmm. And if you feel threatened, you may wish to kind of conceal your vulnerabilities or your weaknesses or the things you can't do. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we were trying to address in the book is, um, you know, the, the question, why should I be led by you, is a, is a question which is what's different about you. Right. And if you're being a leader or a manager and you feel you're under pressure and you've got bright young things coming up and all mm -hmm. the rest of it, you, I think maybe you probably feel less inclined to reveal some of what you can't do. Mm -hmm. um, but what we were trying to argue in the book, and I think it's true, is that um, we want to be, all of us want to be led by human beings, and human beings aren't perfect. Mm -hmm. um, but when we're under pressure, we kind of sometimes feel we've got to conceal some of these weaknesses. Mm -hmm. What we weren't saying in the book is um, show all your weaknesses. Right. Um, and some weaknesses are clearly fatal. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, this evening in our session, sure. we were talking about, uh, well, President Kennedy had a weakness. It was called women. <laughs> but he, right. he kind of used it in a way which almost humanized him. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't recommend womanizing if you're a Roman Catholic priest. Right. Uh, if you see what I mean. Yeah, um, sure. Some weaknesses are fatal. Um, so I think the kind of skill is understanding where your strengths and weaknesses are mm -hmm. and then feeling confident enough to at least reveal some of them so y you can give others the opportunity to help you. Right. So you, I, let's say you identify then those um, non-fatal uh, <laughs> vulnerabilities and so you're able to build a little bit of trust. Um, how do how do you use your own story? You guys are always uh, a lot of the book was talking about being authentic and yeah. really driving from your own personal story. As in Richard Branson can be a Richard Branson, but no one else can be uh, yeah. him. Um, how do you find? Uh, w w what's the good? Uh, what's the first step to finding out who that authentic person is in a leadership sense? That's a good question. Um, if you pick up the dictionary and look mm -hmm. at the Oxford English Dictionary definition of authenticity, mm -hmm. uh, I'll save you the trouble. Okay. <laughs> what it says is of undisputed origins. That's the dictionary of undisputed origins. Mm -hmm. That which is authentic. And you know, and again, we were talking about it tonight, but I, I do think. A, a start mm. is to work out where you came from. And right. I think what a lot of young managers, as well as older ones, you know, we live in a very mobile world. We're mobile educationally, socially, mm -hmm. culturally, geographically. We move around in all sorts of ways. And some of us end up a long way from where we started. And I think, you know, one thing I'd say to, to, to people that are considering the question is, you know, try and get comfortable with where you are, but also where you came from. Mm -hmm. In other words, don't deny your destination, where you are now, but at the same time, don't, don't try to cover the tracks of your origins, because I think that's where, for many of us, mm -hmm. we can get some sense of who we are, at least originally. Um, and I, you know, I, I think sometimes we try and um, just sort of put it away and not right. talk about it, because maybe we feel vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, and, and tonight Gareth was using the uh, the example of Dolly Parton. Right. right. Uh, the picture he showed, you know, mm -hmm. the famous quotation about those glamorous pictures from her mm -hmm. is, it cost me a lot of money to look this cheap. <laughs> um, which is a lovely okay. kind of illustration of someone who's very comfortable with where she is now, mm -hmm. multi-millionaire, uh, mm -hmm. but from deep south of Texas, humble origins, family of 12, I think. Uh, mm. Cost me a lot of money to look this cheap. Right. You know, it's a sort of yeah. uh, sense I'm comfortable. I know. Yeah. 
I know it, where I am, and I know most where I'm women wouldn't it. exactly be excited to say that. <laughs> like, check me out. I'm a, yeah, but it's yeah. it's a sort of comfort with where you start, and yeah. I, I think that's kind of some of us have lost that, and uh, right. that's an important important thing. Okay, and and to wrap it up, uh, you say that um, those young guys can sometimes make uh, an older generation feel uh, scared or uh, at you know that they might have some strengths that maybe um, an older leader wouldn't have. What's maybe a tip, this is from the other perspective, that a Gen Y could do to make uh, a person in a, in a different generation feel more at ease? Yeah. If, uh, is there I mean, any... Well, you know, it's a bit of a stereotype, but I think some, mm -hmm. sometimes Gen Ys are asking a lot, aren't yeah. they? Sure. They're asking a lot of organizations, they're asking a lot of leaders, they're asking a lot of managers, and so on. They're demanding quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I sometimes think they might perhaps give a bit more um, and demand mm -hmm. a bit less. Right. Um, I'm very interested, I don't know the answer, yeah, it's about the extent to which the last couple of years and mm -hmm. you know, the kind of significant downturn has been possibly a bit of a cold shower in some places <laughs> in terms yeah. of you know, the demands of Gen Y. Right. Um, but I do think, you know, and, and the, the book we've come on to after this one is, is about leading clever people. They're often young, talented, demanding, and so on. Um, but I think early on, uh, the idea of giving as well as demanding, and maybe early on, the idea of um, being relaxed about some of what you can't do. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people have said to us, it's okay to be comfortable with your weaknesses when you've got to the top. Right. Because right. then, right. you know, hey, this is me, take I've it or leave it. it. Yeah. <laughs> You've so got to take yeah. it or leave it. Right. Um, but I actually think uh, trying to practice this early on, which mm -hmm. I think the people that get to the top and are good leaders, they were doing this all the way through. Uh -huh. um, but doing it early on feels riskier because you right. haven't established yourself and so on. Who is this young but guy to think he can exactly. be himself? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. But as we said, you know, don't forget the other words be yourself skillfully. Right. Not just be